Welcome to Second Earth Alternative. This is Felipe Osorio. All right, long time no see. I know I've been uh, out of the circuit in terms of bringing episodes to you guys. It's uh, simply I just had a full-time job and there was just not much I can do, but it was seasonal work. I have a ton of episodes that I wanted to present to you. And today I wanted to start out with a topic that we discussed about a year ago about an interstellar object called Oumuamua. Now this object came in to our solar system going over 98,000 miles per hour which happened to be the fastest object to ever come into our solar system and it made an incredibly close approach to the sun and slingshotted. At the time there was much speculation from the scientific community as to what this object could be. There were some who even postulated that this could be an alien object based on the properties. And the, the episode that we made, uh, we were also hypothesizing on this concept simply because of the mathematical improbability of its trajectory. Basically, this object made a very, very close approach to the sun. It was about, I think, it was 0.25 AUs from the sun. And then it not just slingshotted in a way, as one scientist from Pennsylvania described, it's like shooting a bullseye the size of a nickel from 75 miles away. So mathematically, it just seemed very improbable. The fastest object ever imaged in our solar system didn't just come outside of our solar system, didn't just make a fast approach, you know, slingshotting across the sun, but it did so in a mathematically very improbable number. So we were postulating at the time that it might be an interstellar object. If you guys didn't see the episode, I'll show a quick clip. When I first heard about this case, the first thought that actually came to my mind was, wow, this looks like one of those interstellar slingshot phenomenons that you see in sci-fi films that use stars to gain speed. Now, if I were to assume this is a spaceship. And recently, a new paper was published uh, coming out of Harvard Smithsonian, basically saying that there is a theoretical framework to which a possible alien ship could be an explanation from the observational data that we are seeing. I know other channels have reported on this, uh, but after CNN uh, reported on it, I was like, whoa, whoa, wait a second. CNN can do their politics. You know, we got our uh, UFO stuff. If, you, if CNN is going to post this, then obviously we're going to have to post something and, and talk about it. So why don't we just quickly see the CNN clip? It says here this is an interstellar asteroid. And it's now in our solar system. It has been. I think it's going to be in our solar system for another 13 years. All right here, let me pause. This, uh, this guy, Paul, showed us. Uh, we actually published this exact clip about a year ago. So uh, I'm glad that CNN finally caught up. No, astronomers, they had definitely have never seen anything like this. Oh, here. So CNN's claiming that it's 10 times long as it is wide, right? Well, the truth is, if you actually read this study, it says that the aspect ratio is at least 5 to 1. So uh, I think they are misinforming you when they're telling you that it is, it is 10 times as long as it is wide. It's not it is, it's at least 5 to 1 ratio. Just You guys have to have the right information about this. Now they can't they can't physically see the Oumuamua. They're they're basically interpreting the shape by what they're assuming is the rotation of the object and the ref reflectivity of the light. But from far away, it just looks like a little dot. You know, it's it, it's it, this is not the exact shape as we know of it. This is just an artist's impression. Now it, it says here that that means that this visitor could carry the secrets to how other solar systems have been formed, if. This is a natural formation. But here's the thing. We've had like what, I think it's like 860,000 different asteroids and comets imaged in our solar system alone. Out of all the asteroids and comets that have been imaged, the one with the most extreme profile, shape profile in terms of aspect ratio, width to, to length, the, the, the most extreme ratio has been three to one. And then we have this object, Oumuamua, which is possibly five to one, 
and if not five to one, maybe even more, ten to one, as CNN is claiming. So this, that's why the people were wondering what the hell this object could be. You know, it's not just that it's one of the fastest objects to ever come by, but it also has a shape that is basically one in eight hundred thousand. Okay, so CNN is saying the interstellar object may have been alien probe. Harvard paper argues, but experts are skeptical. So given all the information that you guys know so far about this object, the fact that it was the fastest object to ever combine our solar system, it's very unique shape, extreme shape, something that's one in 800,000. Uh, the fact that, as I was telling you, mathematically, it seems to be hitting a bullseye the size of a nickel from 75 miles away. So those to me were pretty good indications that this could be an artificial uh, projectile or spaceship as opposed to something that is natural. So let's look at why the skeptical experts think that this uh, experiment was bogus. So it says here, I'm distinctly unconvinced and honestly think the study is rather flawed. Carl Sagan once said, the extraordinary claims are not supported by extraordinary evidence. And this paper is distinctly lacking in evidence, never mind extraordinary evidence. It's funny that he actually quotes Carl Sagan because in my last episode about Oumuamua, I also quoted Carl Sagan. And specifically, I quoted him in trying to explain the idea that talking about alien civilizations is not really an extraordinary claim, or at least not anymore, now that we know that billions of planets just like Earth harbor this very uh, galaxy. So if, if just in our galaxy alone, we have billions of Earth-like planets, then the concept of something projecting an object to, to another star, that's not extraordinary at all. I mean, just in a hundred years, we went from riding horses to basically creating spaceships that, or, or we have cell phones that communicate wirelessly through the spaceships that we have orbiting our planet. And we did this in 100 years. And somehow I'm supposed to think that it's just extraordinary that some other civilization can perhaps come here. So, uh, so I just thought it was kind of funny that he, of course, he's going to quote Carl Sagan, you know, who basically created this assertion, which I think is a fallacy that has corrupted the minds of hundreds of millions of, if not billions of kids who are essentially trying to find the truth in this world. Uh, frankly, a truth, uh, especially when you don't know whether it can be deemed extraordinary and not, or not at the time, truth just needs evidence. Evidence cannot be biased. So let's just, I just want to put that out. You can't say, you got to think that to assume, to think that you can know whether evidence can be extraordinary or not is a form of playing God in experiments. It's like you're already becoming the, the confounding variable for the experiment because so if you're experimenting, aren't you trying to discover what something is? And if you haven't discovered it yet, how can you tell if it's extraordinary or not? So anyways, so the skeptic also goes on to say, Oumuamua looks like an asteroid or a comet, while that of a solar sail would look very different. The new paper proposes that the sail has been coated in interstellar dust, which obscures its true spectral signature. Uh, first of all, Oumuamua uh, doesn't look like an asteroid. It is projected to be like an asteroid because we don't know what it looks like. We can't see it. We're just mathematically assuming from the things that we've already seen. So you can't say that it looks like an asteroid. It's it's modeled like an asteroid, maybe. that's That would be the, as far as I would reach it. And the, the idea that it's been coated in interstellar dust, which obscures its true spectral signature, what the paper was actually saying is they were saying that in time, it believes that interstellar material would gather in a highly, highly uh, planar like object, something that just like a long plane, obviously with enough time, we're talking about like millions and millions of years, dust will settle on the sails. I mean, it's not like there's any wind uh, on space to blow that dust away. And so what it's saying is that upon collecting that dust, the signature the paper was implying is not going to be perfectly reflective like a metal. But the paper is saying it's low thermal emission suggesting high reflectivity. And then moving on to, to other skeptics, they have they make all kinds of weird conjectures like 
I doubt any functional craft will leave its sail deployed in, in interstellar space. It's like, come on, man. I mean, you're getting like a little nitty gritty here, you know, trying to talk about the actual engineering of an alien space craft and, and using that as a reason for not believing in the paper. Because let's be honest, this paper is not saying that aliens exist. They do postulate natural possibilities. I think what's happening here is the skeptics are simply getting upset that these guys were able to create a theoretical model that could possibly explain the acceleration that occurred with Oumuamua once it exited the sun. So when we reported on this, like a year ago, we had very limited data and now a year later, we have this brand new set of data that is showing that this object, which we already hypothesized could be artificial, is accelerating away from the sun. So it didn't just slingshot, it accelerated at, at, at a, a rate of what? It says here with a with standard deviation of 30. Do you know what a standard deviation of 30 falls in the charts, right? It's, it's like a standard deviation of like 3.3. Three, I think is already one in 10,000. When you take a standard deviation of three and 30, I don't even know if there's enough, enough particles in the universe to create that number. It's so incredibly large, so incredibly improbable that this could happen by accident. So this paper was simply saying that mathematically speaking, this object, the way it exited the sun, that could not have been random chance. That there was some kind of force that was applying on the object that allowed the object to accelerate. So now the question is, what is this force? And, and, and I, I just hate to see these skeptics, you know, get all grumpy and nitty gritty just because we're doing mathematical analysis and trying to figure out how this object could be the way it is. And this these Harvard researchers made a great paper because they, what they simply did is they took the acceleration rates of the object going out of the solar system and they posited that this acceleration is actually, there's a, there's a theoretical framework where this is actually possible using light sail technology. So they were postulating that with a, a given density, uh, with a given uh, mass uh, to weight ratio, and they even you know, were able to calculate the tensile strength of the object based on all the other observations, they simply said that the numbers match, that, that, that it can be that this object should be able to be tough enough to, to wrap around the sun that close. This object can be very long, uh, like a plane-like object, very thin, and, and create the optical properties that we're seeing right now. You know, they, they said that if the object was curved, as opposed to being a perfect plane, that it might change the exact calculation of the length, but it wouldn't be by that much. And they're just simply saying that mathematically this is possible. They're giving all kinds of equations that talk about the probability of it being struck by another object, the, the probability of being slowed down by just general friction of interstellar materials. And plain and simple, this object should be able to go across the entire galaxy with, without suffering major danger to possibly being destroyed or possibly being ripped apart by simple frictional forces of interstellar dust. That's basically what they're trying to say, that this object is possible in a theoretical framework, uh, specifically talking about light sail technology. Now, did they say it has to be that? No, they did not. Now, the one critical comment that uh, the skeptic made that I actually do agree with a lot it says here, beyond that, it would be difficult to trace because of the motion of the stars in any hypothetical alien civilization would face the same issues in charting course that long in the first place. Aside from the argument about whether they would want to launch a craft that they knew would not reach its destination for millions of years. I think that's a great, great comment. I, I think that's been generally the concept of why would uh, alien civilization not travel to another star well it takes too long it, it might be too complicated to charts the, the course of the craft given the motion of all the stars together some some of that the exact motions of each exact star we don't know exactly so to me that's the most reasonable argument that i've heard from the skeptic but the main point of this episode is to show you that this paper is not a paper that is saying aliens exist they're simply giving a theoretical framework where a light sail technology could potentially work as a working model. To sum this up, the density is, is two to eight orders 
of magnitude larger than expected by previous theoretical models. So this object seems to be way more dense than it should be. The aspect ratio seems to be at least 5 to 1, as we discussed earlier, possibly as, as much as 10 to 1. I think the most extreme one has been 3 to 1. So this is way off the charts in terms of its length, prof its length to width ratio profile. The acceleration. This object is also one of the fastest objects, not one of the, it is the fastest object that we have ever imaged coming across our solar system. Outside of that, you have this improbable math of this object going 0.25 astronomical units close to the sun, which is just a very close slingshot. And it apparently emitted no cometary tail. It had no gas emissions or as, as, as it says here, absorption lines. So we were creating this hypothetical model that this object could potentially be artificial. And as it slingshots around the sun, we realize, holy crap, this thing has no comet tail. And another point here, it says, according to this experiment by Refikov in 2018, it's shown that the outgassing, if that was the thing that was responsible for the acceleration of Oumuamua, well, that the associated outgassing torques would have driven a rapid evolution in a mua mua spin, but that's incompatible with the observations. So apparently a mua mua not just accelerated, not was there no cometary tail or no gas emissions, but the object also had the exact same spin. There was no change in its torque, which would have been expected if gases were suddenly spurring out of the comet due to the solar radiation. And lastly, not to mention, as we discussed before, it has low thermal emissions categorized by objects that are highly reflective. So this isn't just like one coincidence. This isn't just like this random object that has, happens to be the fastest object that just has this very neat mathematical probability. We're talking about an object that also is the most elongated object. It is also the most dense object. It could be one of the most reflective objects we have ever witnessed. So when you account all of those details, that to me adds a pretty clear picture that this is probably artificial. And there's nothing wrong with somebody trying to give a theoretical framework for why this object might be artificial. Now, if this object is natural and, 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 and you believe that there is more reasons for it to be natural, please, I, I would really like to hear, I would like to hear your comments about it. I just don't understand why so many skeptics stay so hard headed when the evidence seems so clear. I mean, clear enough for us to be able to hypothesize this nine months ago and, and only to have this verified by researchers at Harvard. So what gives? Oh, that's right. It's called the ego. See, I'm not trying to go against science. I believe that science is an absolute tool, an absolute necessity when trying to uncover your universe, because it's the only tool that we have that allows us to gather information without any fallacies. Whereas if we didn't take the scientific approach, then that thing that may never change might be actual subject to change it might be subject to corruption so i understand the necessity for science what i'm trying to claim here is that when you're utilizing science to study something that is not your physical world but perhaps something that is smarter than you like in like a, a an artificial intelligence well i think science becomes a very flawed tool and simply because of this because the very subject in which you're trying to study is capable of affecting the evidence. Thus, this study, the subject itself becomes the confounding variable of the study. Anyways, thank you so much for uh, following me in this episode. I know it's a, it's a bit of a long one in terms of uh, talking points, but if you did like the episode, I do encourage you to subscribe and definitely hit that bell notification. There's a ton of my audience has basically said that they're not getting notifications. So just make sure that notification bell is rung. If it is rung and you're still not getting notification, please let me know. Thank you so much for sticking around. This is Felipe Osorio signing out.